Hi, so in the previous video we derived our equilibrium in the goods market which I have quickly drawn up and is on the screen now and in this video we're going to look at what happens when we have some shocks to productivity both permanent and temporary. So to start off with let's consider a permanent shock. So before we go into what shifts, I think I will outline what each of these curves that I've drawn up, the supply and demand curves, actually depend on. And we did that in the previous video, where we said that the supply curve, or Y1S, as I've written it here, depends on our productivity parameter A, our interest rate R, and our relative wages W2. And it depended positively on all three of these factors. If you increase these, we're going to increase our supply. And of course, our supply comes through a representative firm that is choosing labor and nothing else. And then we'll also look at our demand curve, C1D. And we said that this depends on the interest rate as well. And it depends on our present value of income of our representative consumers. We Obviously, consumption depends positively on our present value income, and it depends negatively on the interest rate because we have an intertemporal decision about consumption over time. So now that we've got what each of these curves depend on and how they depend on them positively or negatively, it should be quite straightforward to go and say what happens when we have a permanent increase in productivity. So I will say that we're going to be considering an increase in productivity. Uh, for a decrease, it's just the opposite. But what does a permanent increase mean? It means that we increase productivity in both periods one and period two. So we are increasing A1, and we are also increasing A2, and we're increasing these by the same amount. So to make this a bit more concrete, I'm going to just make sure we've written our ones on what these curves depend on. So production in period one depends on our A parameter in period one. And it doesn't depend on our productivity in period two. So we have got a permanent increase in productivity. What does this mean? What do we notice? Well, we have increased A1. So this means we have increased A1 in our supply curve. So that's our direct impact. We're increasing productivity, so we are increasing supply. So we shift this supply curve to the right because we are increasing productivity. Intuitively, what does this mean? We've increased our productivity. So for the same level of workers, all the same inputs, we are just getting more output for it. So it's very simple. Everything is more productive, so we haven't changed anything else. We are just getting more bang for our buck and we are increasing our output without without anything else changing other than just everything is more productive. We've increased A. So that's our direct effect on supply. So that's nice. But we have a secondary effect by increasing the productivity permanently. So if we think about this, so what, what have we actually said here? We've said that we increase our productivity in both periods, so if every worker is producing more for the same amount of work, and we can go back to our relation that we derived in a previous video, which said that the wage rate is equal to the marginal product of labor, which is this. This is the derivative of our production function. That is what the wage rate is equal, and if we are looking at the wage rate in period one, we just subscript these all with ones. Our wage rate in period one depends on productivity in period one and on our labor in period one. But we have increased our productivity parameter A, which means that our marginal product of labor has increased, and so we increase the wage rate for period one. Where does, where does this uh, impact our model? Well, you, you may be tempted to think that this impacts our model over here by increasing by increasing this ratio of W1 to W2, but that is actually incorrect 
because we have this same relation w2 is equal to a2 f primed l2 and we have actually increased as we said this is a permanent increase so we've increased a2 by the exact same amount so this w2 is actually increasing by the exact same amount as w1 so w1 over w2 is actually constant it doesn't change at all so this parameter doesn't affect anything here uh, what this increase in wage actually does is it increases the present value of income for our consumers which enters into our equation in the demand function or our consumption function so we've increased the wage for everyone if they work the same amount they are going to have more income because their marginal productivity has increased so firms are paying them more so this actually enters into our equation as a shift in the consumption function um, so we move to here I should say that this is I'll say that these are prime curves just to show that just to label them a bit differently so that we see this is where our curves have moved to but this is our indirect effect on demand it's indirect because the increase in productivity isn't instantly um, increasing our demand function it is increasing our demand through an increase in wage which in turn increases our present value income and so that increases our consumption. So these are all the effects that happens. We are now in a new equilibrium, which is given by this point here. And if I've drawn these curves correctly, you should notice that our interest rate stays the same. And I very carefully did, did that such this was the case. This, uh, this shift in the consumption curve or the demand function will perfectly shift such that and we keep the interest rate the same so always shift the curve that exact amount so that the so that the interest rate stays the same why does the interest rate stay the same well it's because we have the same we've increased productivity by the same amount in both periods our a1 and a2 have increased by the same amount so there shouldn't be any intertemporal substitution effect nothing should change across periods and our interest rates we can interpret that as just the price of deferring consumption between one period or by borrowing into one period or saving into the next period is just the, the sort of price of consumption uh, when we move it across one period so the interest rate should stay the same if we have a permanent increase in productivity because nothing as, as we said for example our relative wage rate stayed the same and everything all the relative variables stay the same so our interest rate is unchanged from a permanent increase in productivity okay so now clearing that di the diagram to make it a bit easier to now see what happens when we have a temporary change in productivity so we've looked at the permanent case now what does a temporary increase in productivity say again we're going to look at an increase a decrease is just the opposite <clears throat> so a temporary increase is we are increasing a1 but we are keeping a2 the same we do not increase our productivity in period two we are just having a temporary increase in our current productivity and then it goes back to the normal level in period two so again we've got what each of these curves depends on so let's just look at what the impact is well in our supply curve we still have the same increase in a1 so for the exact same reasons as before our supply curve shifts out by exactly the same amount actually I'll do this in green so we can see what the differences are so Y1S this moves out I won't explain this again but our productivity increases so our output in increases directly because of this um, but now we had but well, we have another change so before we said that um, let's highlight this this w1 over w2 we said that this stayed constant before and that was because we had wage in period one from our first order condition in the past was our wage in period one was this equation and our wage in period two is given by this first order condition in period two or oh, that should be labor two there not labor one and what did we say last time we said that 
we increased A1, so we increase our wage, but we also increased A2, so that increased our wage in period 2. But what we have said, this is a temporary increase, so we're not increasing A2, and so we do not increase our wage 2. So what does this mean? Well, it means we're increasing our wage 1, but we are keeping our wage 2 the same because it's a temporary increase in productivity. So what does this do to our ratio wage 1 over wage 2? It increases it. We increase our relative wages in period 1 compared to period 2 because labour is more productive today, but it is not more productive tomorrow. So we demand more labour today. We want to produce lots today while workers are productive. So then we, so we take advantage of this increase in productivity. So we have an indirect effect on supply and supply shifts again due to this second uh, difference. And this, so this only happens because we have temporary change because we are not increasing productivity in period two. That's the key difference. So our supply shifts twice, one direct effect, one indirect through the wage rate. And so that's our effects on the supply curve. Now, does the demand curve change at all? Well, we know it does, and it's for a similar reason to before, where we've just said that we increase wage in period one. So this means we're going to be increasing our present value of income again. So that's good, but we have a slightly lower shift than we, or a slightly smaller shift than we did in the permanent increase. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but it was as a result of us increasing W2 and W1. We had a very large increase in our present value income because our the value of our income increased in both periods. And we know present value income depends on both income in period one and period two. But now we are only increasing the wage rate in period one. So our consumption increases by a relatively smaller amount than it did in the previous uh, permanent increase in productivity. But we still do shift out our consumption slightly because we have a higher wage rate. So consumers earn a bit more. So we shift out our wages to here. And so where is our new equilibrium point? It is where our our new y1 s2 curve is equal to our c1 d1 curve so our new equilibrium is here we'll give that by y star 1 prime and r1 star prime probably could do better notation there but you get the point they are different points what has changed then in the temporary model we have decreased the interest rate and we have increased the output in period one by quite a bit and we've increased output in period one by more than we did in the permanent model because we've had this second shift out in supply and we have decreased the interest rate where in the permanent model we didn't we said in the permanent model we didn't change the interest rate because productivity changes in both periods so there's no intertemporal substitution effect but now we only change productivity in one period. So the value of the interest rate changes because we, we value or we, we want to substitute things into different periods. We want to substitute our work into period one. And so then we can earn more in period one and then save it for period two because our wage rate is higher in period one. Our productivity rate is also higher in period one. So we have an intertemporal effect which decreases the interest rate. So that is the main difference between permanent and temporary productivity shocks is that our interest rate changes in temporary shocks, but it does not change in permanent shocks. But we also have a different change in output. It is worth highlighting here that our output is, of course, output in Y1. So this is why a temporary change increases our output in Y1 much more, or not much more, but just more than if we have a permanent change. Because you may think, why, why is output going up more with a temporary shock when a permanent shock means that we're increasing output in two periods? Surely a permanent shock is better for output. And it is because 
with a permanent shock, we're, we will also be increasing our output in period two due to this productivity increase. However, a temporary shock will increase our output in period one more. And we are only looking at period one here. We have not looked at what happens in period two. And so this would, this would be very different uh, if we're looking at a temporary shock because in period two, we don't have an increase in productivity here. So just make sure you realize we're talking about period one here when we think about this difference as having a higher productivity or higher output increase with a temporary shock. So that just about wraps up this video. Make sure to check out the playlist for future videos where I will be adding investment to our model so we can better demand or better account for fluctuations in demand and output subscribe for lots of future videos and do drop a like if this was at all useful.